In this video, we got ourselves an ex Pentecostal Bishop who joined the seven day Adventist church. Wait till you hear this, sit tight and enjoy the show. When I was um, in the Anglican church in 1964, uh, I, I bumped onto an out, uh, out, um, outward, outdoor evangelical um, uh, crusade, which was preaching the Pentecostal message. And in 1965, I embraced an art message and uh, I, I, I felt so much um, attached to it to a point where I wanted to train as, as a Pentecostal pastor. And in 1966, um, I was able to uh, apply to join um, uh, a theological college here in Nairobi, um, whereby I was able to, after three years, I was able to be ordained as, as a Pentecostal pastor. And since then, I kept on that message to that until up to the time I was able to encounter uh, the message of the Adventist. Adventist. While I was ministering as a Pentecostal pastor in Heroes of Faith Pentecostal Church, um, there were visitors whom we had invited to come from the U.S. Um, to come and, uh, and observe what we were doing because we wanted to, ha to have a sister church in the States. And when Dr. Rari Jones came over, we, we agreed that we were going to organize open-air crusades whereby um, we could be able to reach out people in a normal way. And um, as you have found in Kenya that, you know, when people are invited to come for crusades, they turn up in massive numbers. And, and, and that is the excitement part of it. Thereafter, after that crusade, uh, I was invited to go to the States to go and assist them, assist them or run more about planting churches in, in the Western style. And that's where I was able to live and, and, and flew over to the States in, in Texas um, in 2000 and 2001. While I was in there, uh, let me just go a little bit backwards to say that when I was in the States, after two and a half years, I was able to be invited to go to the UK uh, to, to train, one, to train the youth and to assist a, a, a sister church, which was called um, Trinity Tabernacle Church, which was under Leverend Martin. And I was invited to that church as an associate pastor. And, and I responded to an invitation, and I was looking forward for great things and to see how God really worked. It was by then, when I, was, when I went to the, to the UK in, 19, um, in, in 2002, uh, 2004, um, that is where I first and foremost heard about the the faith of, uh, of the Adventist church through three uh, Tanzanian sisters who had come to attend the August um, uh, camp in Oxford. I want to say that God reaches out in different forums. I heard a hymn that is normally sung in the church, which by then they were singing, which says, I'll follow thee, O my Savior, wherever thou shall be. That is the first encounter. Because when they were singing that, chorus, uh, that, that hymn, in fact, at the eve of the Sabbath, I remember now, that um, I, I, I was burning in my spirit to know, who are these people singing? How can Africans come and sing such wonderful cho choruses in the UK? Because I expected everybody, everybody was white. And I decided to reach them out to find out wh who they were. And uh, having made that effort, they introduced themselves for the first time as an Adventist women who had come for the camp in, in, in the UK. And that is my first encounter. Thereafter, we exchanged the contacts and uh, they introduced me to the faith uh, to a point whereby I felt strongly that I really need to know a little bit more of that. The hymn, when I attended, when I had the audience with the three ladies, it is themselves who introduced me to the Sabbath message. And I couldn't stop from that very day and very moment to stop thinking about the Adventist message. They did challenge me scripturally, and they, 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 they didn't push it to me, but they were hospitable enough to tell me, please, we are going to give the biblical quotations whereby you can find yourself about the Sabbath keeping. It is not uh, an entity of anyone. It, it is, it's a command. It is biblical. And thereafter, I decided to take on the, on, on the challenge. It's because by then, I was working as a Pentecostal pastor while in, in Bristol in the UK. 
when I embraced that message, that is my, was, was, was the beginning of my downfall with the faith or detachment from the Pentecostal uh, doctrine that I held by then to the new doctrine, which is sound, I would call it, and I want to emphasize a sound doctrine of the Sabbath keeping. And I, I, I decided to, to re embrace it, no matter, what, no matter the outcome. Uh, of course, there, there was uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of problems when I embraced the faith because I was hired by the Pentecostal uh, church, whereby now, uh, having dropped the faith, I have to em had to embrace the new faith, which um, had its own consequences. And I thank God I'm not regretting today. Having embraced that faith in 2005, when I was in, in the UK, I decided that the first thing I want to do is to reach, if possible, everyone whom I had ministered to uh, before, when I was a Pentecostal pastor, to tell them the truthful message of the summit sabbath keeping and i have since then been trying to do that um even though in a meager way or in a small way i have been trying to reach them out and tell them hey this is what this is the, what the truth is all about it is about keeping the sabbath message it is the sound doctrine and if you are really waiting for the second coming of jesus christ you've got to embrace the truthful faith otherwise you'll be let out the bible says the truth will set you free when I was set free by that truth, I tell you, I, I, I felt being born again over the message that I had had. And, and I felt the Lord was actually uh, expounding me to, into a higher level of the faith, which I, I find very, very um, realistic. The faith that would carry me through in times of trouble or in the times of need, or even when things are okay. B because it's nothing to do with anyone. It, it, it is everything to do with Jesus Christ. Because the Bible is um, uh, from Genesis to Revelation. All the scriptures point at Jesus Christ. The one we claimed when I was in the, in the Pentecostal church, uh, that he is the Savior. Now we need to be obedient to his word by keeping the Sabbath and embracing it. I would, I, the way I look at it myself is that I'm looking for every opportunity that the Lord will impart in my life, that I can continue to extend, expand the kingdom of God in these sound doctrine, the sound message of, of uh, Sabbath keeping and uh, the truthful doctrine uh, which has been uh, neglected or uh, denied to some extent uh, to various uh, churches and institutions of faith whereby this is one time before the second coming of our Lord Jesus, that we can reach out to the community, we can reach out to the people, we can reach the sound-keeping churches and, and share with them the truthful message that the Lord compels everyone to be a Sabbath keeper. Because we also find the Sabbath even in the book of Revelation in heaven as well. You don't heard it, man. So the man discovered the Sabbath truth. He packed up his bag and left the Pentecostal church. Why is this going on? Why are so many ministers, why are so many different people all just going from one denomination to another? Why are people leaving the world, leaving other churches and joining the Adventist faith? Okay, I'll answer the question for you since you ask. It's because they have the truth. They do. They simply do. <laughs> it's just, it's that simple. Friends, listen. The man spoke about the Crusades and how he was challenged. And this is the significance of having these Crusades and continue to share the message and challenge people, do it in a very humble and loving way. And this is what we do here as well on this channel, okay? <laughs> we preach on Sabbath and we keep the Sabbath here. But throughout the weekdays, my mission is to challenge y'all. <laughs> Some of you need to be challenged. And I'm coming for you. <laughs> and it, here's the thing. Uh, uh, the Sabbath is a command. It is not an opinion. It is not, a, it's not an option. It, it's not the way, it's not what I feel. No, no, no. It is part of the Ten Commandments, buddy. Stop arguing with the Word of God. What I love about this man's message is that he chose to embrace the Word, no matter what the consequences. You know, some of us, we are so flimsy. We are so feckless. We, are so, we have no backbones, right? 
as soon as we become a Christian, a little bit of temptation and challenge come, we weep and cry and run backward. Not this man. He put his hand to the plow. He chose not to look back. He said he didn't do like uh, Lot's wife. Listen, man, remember Lot's wife? Stop looking back. Go forward. Listen, friend, I did the same. I did the same. I packed up my bag and left. I left the, the, the Catholic church and I said, no more. But I'll tell you what. What he said here is that the Adventist church is sound doctrine. And I wish people would understand the nature of this. There's no confusion in the faith, man. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean everything we know and do is perfect. No, we're not talking about perfection here, friends. We're talking about sound doctrine. The stuff you hear from the Adventist people is like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. I remember when I sat down and I got Bible study in 2010. It was like one study after another. Question and answers. Open your Bible. What does it say? Do you read it? Do you understand it? Answer your thing and move to the next. It, it, it was sound doctrine. It was appealing to the mind. Intellectual appeal. Saying, James, this is what it is. It was not about emotionalism. It wasn't about hype. It wasn't the praise team. It was the word of God being studied from one question to another. It was a slow process, my friend. That was the best thing that happened to me because the doctrine is sound. And I want to say this also. There is room for spiritual growth in our lives. And I think some people who are might be thinking, are we being bold and braggadocious online when we speak? That's not really the goal. What this is what we understand. In Christianity, we are always growing. You understand? We must grow and emerge and walk in a light. And as the light of Christ is revealed to us, we walk in it, right? And as we do that, we are showing that we have faith in Jesus. We are showing, no matter how much we know, we must follow the Lamb, whithersoever He goes. So there are people of different faith who love the Lord. They're serving Him with all of their hearts, minds, soul, and spirit. We recognize that. I recognize that. And that doesn't mean they know everything. You understand? This is this is the 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 how could I say this? This is similar. Let me bring this this on your screen here. This is similar to what the apostles did for this man. I think his name was Apollos, if I'm not mistaken. But he was preaching the word. He was a man of God, and he he was serving the Lord. And some of you love the Lord. You are serving God with all your hearts, and you're doing what the Lord has laid on your heart to do, and you are doing the work of the Lord, and we get that, we understand that, and that doesn't mean you know everything. That doesn't mean you should close the door to any new teachings. That doesn't mean what the Adventist people are telling you is a lie because you serve the Lord with all your hearts where you are right now. You should always have an open heart to the fact there might be something else that I don't know, and when God reveals this to me, I need to humble myself and follow. Here is the thing I'm saying here. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Look at that. There goes a brother. He knew the work of the Lord. This man is doing the work of God. But does he have every single truth that is needed for his salvation? Does God want him to grow spiritually? Is there more to gain? Is there more to learn? Yes. Look what the Bible says. And he began to speak boldly in a synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. This is all we say in friends. Some people love the Lord. They may be in a Pentecostal church, in a Catholic church. They may be a Mormon, Jehovah Witness, who knows? I don't care where they are, where they're from. Some people love the Lord and they're serving Him in the light of what they have. And God respects that. But the Bible says when the spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. So there's more to the truth than what you know. So as the truth continues to reveal itself as a beautiful flower, it opens up. You must walk in the light, lest darkness come upon you. You must continue to follow the light as the Lord reveals it to you. And the path of the just, the Bible says, is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So guess what? Here goes a man who had been doing the work of the Lord. Does that mean there was nothing else for him to learn? 
Does that mean God could not reveal new truths to him? Does that mean because his ministry was fervent in his spirit, he was diligent sharing the word of the Lord? Does that mean there was nothing else? No. He humbled himself and began to follow the rest of the apostles' teachings because more light was given to him. And this is what I'm simply saying here, friends. I'm not here to say you should just all of a sudden just throw in the towels. And no, no, no. All I'm simply telling you, friends, have an open heart. As God reveals most to you, follow. Some of you have been arguing with the Sabbath of the Lord. You need to stop. And some of you have been arguing about the health message. Oh, I can eat whatever I want. If I just pray over it, it's all good. You need to stop doing that. That's not good. You're risking your health. Mm -mm. And some of you are arguing over the basic common truth that Jesus is the Son of God. There's people arguing online. Oh, no, he's just another man. Oh, no, he's not, he's not really deity. Like, I'm like, what? You need to stop. You need to have an open heart and a humble spirit and follow Jesus wherever he leads you. And if you need help with anything, you have any questions, friends, I got a link in the description below. You have an email address below. You can connect with me directly. And you can also make your prayer request, ask for Bible studies. And I also want to tell you, friends, we have Sabbath worship. We have service every Sabbath. Go and watch when we go live and listen. See what it looks like, the interaction and the, the way we do things, the fellowship. Even watch the ministry. Watch how we do things online. Make your own judgment. And we have series below that answers a lot of your questions. Anything you want, just let us know. We are open and we understand. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.